Hey guys, Tyler here with WFO. Uh, today we bring you a customer's truck. It's a 1975 uh, Chevy K10 short bed. It's a pretty cool truck. It's got a, a big block swap NB4500 with a Chevy NP208. Uh, customer had half ton axles. Nobody with a big block should be running around with a 10 bolt, so he sorted that out real quick. We updated the rear to a 14 bolt full floater. Uh, the front was a 10 bolt out of a eight lug truck, so that swapped on the wheel pattern and everything. Um, pretty simple, but cool build. It runs pretty good. It's got a Holley Sniper EFI system on it. Not a lot of old trucks laying around that aren't dented and beat up because guys like me. Oh! Look at, look at All right, you join. Look at the tire spinning. Look at the tire spinning. You join? Hey. So close. So close. This I thing. got a nice place to take a nap now. So you can see full 14 bolt full floater flange here. Um, semi floats, they don't bolt in. The axle shafts don't bolt into the flange. It's retained by a C clip. So if you were ever to break an axle shaft or something, it does uh, run the ability to have the whole wheel tire brake assembly travel out of your axle assembly, uh, axle housing. So the flange is the upgrade here because it, it keeps everything together. Even if you were to break the shaft, you can pull the shaft out, bolt the flange back on and just carry on about your day back home. Um, Back inside here, you can see we used our U-bolt flip kit with the top plates and then uh, our perches and it looks like either a four or six degree pinion shim. So a little cool uh, update there to get the driveline vibration uh, out of it. And then another little trick thing is customer did some boom tubes. Another cool thing that we added and a lot of guys overlook is adding the factory e-brake back into this thing. So. Um, we had a cool low car kit that uh, we typically stock here in house. Um, ties all back into the factory locations, the stock pedal on the floor and everything works. So pretty cool for a five speed truck to have a working e-brake because it, it uh, kind of a pain in the butt with that one. So up front here, we got the 10 bolt. It's eight lug 10 bolt out of uh, probably 79 and later, uh, you know, eight lug suburban or pickup truck. Um, we retained the push-pull steering with the raised uh, drag link arm. Uh, Blake went through and did all new fresh uh, axle U-joints, axle shafts, put some paint on them and stuff, all new ball joints, all new steering components as far as the tie rod and stuff. He will eventually switch over to crossover steering, which we do offer here in-house. Cool little simple, um, you know, build. Sweet with the eight lug stuff, you know, you're not going to go out and thrash it too bad and, you know, take some serious abuse. Used our U-bolts uh, here, simple shim, two degree shim, some center pins and stuff, but if you guys ever need anything as far as tie rod or drag link or anything for the push-pull steering, we can do that as well. Um, get rid of the adjusting sleeves to make it a little bit stronger. There is a few options that you can do to, to beef this up, but uh, you know, for a push-pull system with the sway bar in there, it's gonna make for a clean, nice daily driver. So we're standing here in front of the gear and axle shop, pop the hood, uh, checking out the big block that's underneath it. So it appears to be a uh, Gen 3 big block, early model. It's got the factory NV4500 slave cylinder with the built-in reservoir. So it's a non-bleed system. So you just fill it up and let it do its thing and it, it works the air out of it. Pretty cool to see a stock clutch master cylinder, slave cylinder set up in there. Pretty cool to see a big block in a single cab short bed. Uh, that was that was a big hot rod thing back in the day, you know, make some free power with bigger cubes. So, you know what they say, no replacement for displacement. Remember that, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed this clean and simple build brought to you by WFO. Thanks for watching.